Some pretty big information dropped for Ever Crisis, the Final Fantasy VII mobile game that's being released by Square Enix later this year. And it's pretty exciting. I think a lot of people will really like to hear what I have to say. The footage I'm showcasing above was actually recorded by me at Summer Games Fest. I was given the opportunity by Square Enix to capture that, so thank you guys for that. Feel free to check out the video where I basically just showcase the first 30 minutes of the game from the tutorial and the first chapter that you guys can go and enjoy right now on the channel. The game is shaping up to be a really good title, and honestly, I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't expecting much from the earlier shots that we saw, but getting a chance to actually see it live in front of me and <laughs> watching how much the graphics have been improved on i'm actually kind of blown away and i cannot wait to see what else they'll have in store for us especially with crazy ass stuff like this zach jumping into uh to fight and square off against sephiroth it is tutorial of course but you know square enix this is a sign of things to possibly come for more final fantasy coverage whether it's final fantasy 7 or 16 all of that stuff is coming your way. Hit that subscribe button and notification bell to stay up to date. Only 21% of you guys who watch all the videos are currently sub. Let's raise that even higher. Now, with that being said, let's get back into the video. This info actually comes from rbgsite.com, which is kind of hilarious because reading from their article, it just sounds like they asked <laughs> the Square Enix employees uh, essentially this information and they straight up gave it to them, which I realized I could have done. But I was just very excited to be playing the game and uh, they honestly asked me, do you have any questions? Feel free to ask us. And the only question I asked was, can I record? And they said, yeah, absolutely. There's no embargo. You can record and post it. So it is what it is. But they got it here first. They managed to confirm with PR a few key pieces of information about the upcoming title. Notably, what content from the anthology will be available on launch and whether the game would feature a stamina system. Immediately, they can confirm that the original Final Fantasy VII story content will be available in its entirety at launch. So originally, <laughs> we were gonna, we thought that we would have to wait every single month to get the original story of Final Fantasy VII to release with Ever Crisis, but it seems that with all the extended delays and time that they've had since the game was announced and back in 2021, they've been able to just finalize all the chapters and later this year, when the official game drops, we'll get the entire 10 chapter portion of the original game. Yes, uh, before previous interviews confirmed that the entire Final Fantasy VII original story for Ever Crisis will be 10 chapters. And they also said, and players will not have to juggle a stamina system in order to play through said story, which is good because you know, some mobile games in particular will say that you have to take a certain amount of time off and wait until stamina replenishes as a way to kind of force you to buy more stamina or uh, keep on playing through an extended time. Don't really like that, but really like that they're doing this. Additionally, it was also stressed that the game's monetization has been deliberately tuned to stay out of the way of the story. What this amounts to, at least from what we're told, additional costumes that players can dress the cast of Final Fantasy VII in as they can progress through the story. So basically, as you play through the main story, you will not be forced or required to spend money on various things. It's merely cosmetic and optional things and more towards the end game portions or secret dungeons where you kind of would need to buy some stuff or at least roll for new weapons because you are coming across much tougher enemies and challenges. They also said that there's no word as of right now if the game will be playable on Apple TV or support gamepad controls, which is important. I think that if it is available on Apple TV, that'd be really cool because you can connect your controller Bluetooth wirelessly to your Apple TV and play it that way. And if not, uh, can you at least plug your controller into your phone and play it that way too, Bluetooth wise? It's not like it does require any precise inputs, but I do feel like the analog, if you guys could tell from the footage that I uploaded before, walking around really did feel a little strange sometimes, especially trying to turn. There were some angles that were a little bit harder to turn around with uh, the joystick that would appear on screen. Again, it doesn't feel uncomfortable. It's just something that I noticed. Uh, and if you watch the video, you'll notice me mention and comment on it a couple times. Obviously, very early footage. Expect for this stuff to be fine-tuned and worked a little bit better when the game officially releases or the beta drops. And the beta is coming soon. Now, remember, the beta is coming on July 6th, which is awesome. Really cool to see. That actually is not that far away between Final Fantasy 16 releasing next week and us essentially playing and being absorbed and all of that. We will also have the beta dropping pretty much around the time when everybody is kind of done with Final Fantasy 16 or has gone through the majority of the main story stuff, which is really cool. You can actually pre-register for the beta right now on Android devices. It does not seem like there will be an iOS beta, unfortunately. 
but essentially it just comes down to Google being a little bit easier to work with in terms of getting a beta, APK up and running, whereas iOS is a little bit harder for them to work with. I will definitely be streaming the beta, so you can look out for that for sure. That's an exciting time for me personally. I can't wait to enjoy this with a lot of you guys. There are quite some fans that aren't excited about uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake and Rebirth's direction of the new story, but Ever Crisis will retain the OG story of all the entire compilation series of Final Fantasy VII. As you remember, not only will it be coming with the OG Final Fantasy VII, it's coming with Crisis Core, Dirge of Cerberus, Advent Children, which is mind-blowing to hear, and Before Crisis, which never came to the US and is a pretty hard game to play unless you do the RPG Maker version, which is pretty good, but still, it's not the original game. I do hope we get more confirmation on uh, being able to swap through the characters later on. Obviously, we'll get to know that with the beta, but as of right now, from when I was playing in this video, I could only control Cloud and Zack in the tutorial. It'd be really cool if we can control Barrett and see what exactly we can make him do. But as of right now, Barrett is actually kind of broken. At least the way that they have the timing set up for when Barrett attacks versus when you get to attack. It's pretty crazy how fast he deletes enemies, I can't lie. The potential for skins and other weapons in this game have already been blowing my mind. And recently we've gotten more looks at Cloud, Tifa, Zack, and Aerith again. I don't recall seeing a new skin for Barrett, which is a little disappointing. But obviously those things are coming. More than likely there'll be a sailor suit skin. <laughs> and I really do like the fact that you're not forced to have to like buy shit and its monetization stuff is a little bit more tame compared to other gotchas. It's not as predatory as before. I mean, that is still left to be determined. We have to wait and see on that. It's also been mentioned that you'll be able to go through and find the original game's weapons in the exact locations from where you could find them in the original game, which is really cool. I wonder if when we come across the Elagor mini boss fight, we'll be able to steal the striking staff for Aerith from them. But I don't know if they really do that. I mean, that's a clear indication of how uh, much love and detail was put into this. But again, that's still left to be decided on and still left to be seen so now i want to hear from you guys are you excited for crisis core knowing this information are you still on the fence about it i know the but the fact that it is a mobile title is a little off-putting but of course emulators do exist so i'll be able to play through your pc in some ways and i do hope fingers crossed the apple tv method does work out because a lot of people do have apple tvs and it'd be really cool to just play on a screen in that way and it runs pretty good that's how i played fantasia be sure to like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe if you are new. More Final Fantasy videos are on the way if you do not want to miss them. My name is Blitz and thanks for watching.